Hey guys, so this is going to be kind of like a freestyle, rant style video where I'm going to go over Romans 7 a little bit. And I made a little clip about Nate Marino talking about Romans 7 last night, and I watched it, and uh, I'll make a video exposing that where I'll cut clips of things that he's saying, but I'll, I'll just explain and go over some of the things that he says in his videos anyway, in his video. And it's interesting because I already did a video on Romans 7, um explaining how it's talking it's uh you know paul speaking as a saved man in the controversial part you know in the latter portion of chapter seven where you know he says oh wretched man that i am you know he's speaking as a saved man and i explained that and i went over different views and stuff and explained how this has to be you know the right the correct interpretation and i pretty much covered everything that nate presents in his video um you know, he misinterprets chat, or verse 14, okay, when he says, uh, when Paul says he's sold under sin, and Nate Reno says that means that he's in bondage to sin, so he can't be saved, he must be speaking as before he was saved, and that's wrong. Um, and I'll go over that. He talks about how there's no mention of the Holy Spirit in chapter 7, you know, or at least the latter part, there's one mention of the Holy Spirit in chapter 7, but... In the controversial passage, there isn't. And, uh, you know, I covered that. That doesn't really mean anything. Uh, I mean, there could be a significance of that, but not what Nate Marino wants it to be. And uh, he says that Paul's speaking in the historical present, and I covered that. Pretty much everything that Nate represents, I, I already covered and disproved. And, but I'll go over this uh, again. And a brother was talking to me about this not that long ago, having some questions about it. And I am confident that Romans 7, the, the controversial part where Paul says, you know, oh, wretched man that I am, he's speaking as a saved person. I'm confident of that. And um, anyways, so I already did a study on it, but it was kind of long and, you know, I, I tried to go over the figures of speech in the chapter and try to interpret each verse and so in the future you know as i learn more and i grow hopefully i'll get some better shorter videos out and hopefully work on that soon as well and, and i'll work on typing up a, an expository on the website and stuff but nate marino is wrong it's a lot of people who say that paul is speaking before he was saved um they're usually sinless perfection people. They'll deny that Christians struggle with sin whatsoever. And uh, and so Nate Marino and Jason Cooley, they walk this line of legalism and sinless perfection and work salvation. They walk right on that line. And uh, I've heard him say on their Sound of Battle Cry podcast or radio show or whatever before that I think I've heard, pretty much heard them say that, you know, if you struggle with sin, then you're probably not saved or something like that, which is false. Uh, Christians can and do struggle with sin at times. Um, there is a war between the flesh and the spirit in a, in a believer. And we get that in Romans 7. And Nate Reno says that his interpretation of Romans 7, denying that Christians can struggle with sin, uh, or that Paul struggled with sin is liberating. He says that his interpretation is liberating, which is really ironic coming from him, him and Jason Cooley, who teach that Christians can lose rewards for, for not, you know, for not being, you know, elite, an elite Christian. Unless you're an elite Christian, you know, you'll lose rewards. Or if you don't, if you if you miss opportunities to witness to people you'll have blood on your hands and you'll there'll be guilt and sorrow in heaven so you know so they put people in bondage and fear and guilt so for them to talk about liberty is pretty ironic pretty crazy but uh plus the whole bondage of the whole church system you know you have to go to a building called a church on sunday and you have to do this and that and you have to give your money to the pastor and everything so you know they're like the kings of bondage here. So for him to be talking about liberty is, is crazy. Um, 
But, you know, there's so many things missed with his false interpretation. You know, when Paul says, O wretched man that I am, he's longing for a glorified body. You know, brothers and sisters, don't you glorify for, or don't you long for a glorified body, you know? I mean, thank God that we are saved. We are regenerated. We are a new creature. The Bible doesn't deny that. I'm not denying that. Paul wasn't denying that when he said, O wretched man that I am. But the fact is that he is still longing for a glorified body, you know, complete redemption, you know. We should all long for that. And so, with the false interpretation, they're kind of missing this point and others. And, you know, false doctrine is, is wrong. It's just, it's sin, period. False doctrine is false. But we see in Romans 7, verses 7 through 13, we have a lot of the verb tense is past tense. Okay, so we know that Paul is speaking of the past then. You know, in verse 7, he says, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Okay? I had not. Speaking of the past. Speaking in the past. Okay? Past tense verbs. Okay. So he's speaking in the past tense. You know, in verse 9, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. When the commandment came, we're talking about like, you know, past, past experiences here. Speaking in the past. But once we get to verse 14 and forward here, then we get to present tenses, okay? The, the tense changes. Now he's speaking in the present tense. For we know that the law is spiritual, in verse 14, but I am carnal, sold under sin. I am, speaking, you know, in the present tense. For that which I do, I allow not. For that that I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Okay, so verse 14, you know, I am carnal, sold under sin. Not, I was carnal, sold under sin, which was, which was, you know, the passage before that was speaking in the past tense. You know, if it was continuing in, in the past tense, that's what it would say. You know, I was carnal, sold under sin, speaking of the past, before he was saved. But now, but, but it's in the present now. Okay, so there's a tense change there. Well, why is that, you know? Well... Nate Marino and others say that this is speaking of the historical present. So he's still speaking of before he was saved, still speaking in the past, but he's, he's writing it in a, in a present tense. Why would he do that? Well, just for, just for you know, a, a different expression, just for an artistic you know, way of saying things or whatever. Uh, no, there's no reason to believe that, okay? Uh, there's a significant change here. Uh, so the only the natural way to interpret it would be, you know, that he's speaking the present now, as he is, as a saved man. But they see things like sold under sin, and oh wretched man that I am, and they say, well this can't be him as saved, so you know we have to interpret this a different way, so it's the present tense. So it's like error begets error begets error because they, they're, not, they're not understanding the, the senses in which these things are being said. And, uh, you know, not getting the correct interpretation. So what does it mean when he says that I am carnal, sold under sin? Okay, he's speaking of his condition being sold under sin, not his position. Okay, he's not saying that he's in bondage to sin. He's saying, I am carnal, I am flesh, I am a man, sold under sin. All men were sold under sin when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, okay, the fall of man. Since then, men are born into sin. That's what he's saying. I am carnal, I am a man, I was born into sin. Okay, I have that sin nature in me. Regardless of whether I'm saved or not, it's still there. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. Okay? 
And Nate ends up saying, well, see, uh, every time he wants to do good, he, he doesn't, he, he does wrong. Well, it doesn't say every time, okay? It doesn't say every time. That's adding his words into the, into the text. But the interesting thing is, you know, for that which I do, I allow not. So he doesn't like it when he does wrong. That which I would, that I do not. He wants to do right, but sometimes he doesn't. That what I hate, I, that I do. So he hates doing wrong in the sight of the Lord. Does that sound like a, a lost person to you? Someone who hates doing evil? You know, they might say, well, sometimes people do hate their sins, even if they're lost. You know, they might hate specific sins because of the consequences or whatever. But in general, as a whole, they love their sin. Okay? And that's not what's being expressed here. He's saying, you know, I hate sin. I hate it when I do wrong. I want to live right for the Lord, but sometimes I don't, and I hate it when that happens. Okay? So this is the struggle of a saved person. This is not the life or the experience of a lost person. And then in verse 17, I've talked about this before in the Christian identity. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So he's making this disconnect there between his between his his new nature and his old nature. Okay, he no longer identifies with his old nature. That's the sin that dwells in me. That's not me now. You know, Paul's saying, you know, I'm saved, I'm redeemed, I'm born again, and uh, you know, I'm a new creature in Christ. But sometimes I still do sin, and when I do, it's the sin that dwelleth in me. That's the old man that we have to put off. That's the old nature. He makes that, that distinction there. So we don't identify with the old man. We don't go around saying, I'm just a sinner. Okay, all are sinners. You know, even saved people, we're just sinners. We don't say that, okay? I'm a saint. I'm saved. I'm redeemed. I'm washed in his blood. Okay? I'm not a sinner anymore. Even though at times we do commit sins, we're not sinners if we're saved. We don't identify with that old nature. We don't identify with that old man. That's the sin that dwelleth in me. Okay? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, again, old nature, old man, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Okay? He wants to perform what is right in the eyes of the Lord. That's not a lost person. Again, this is a struggle that a saved person would have. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I would do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me again. I find that a law or a rule that when I do good, evil is present with me. And I think this, is, this really rings a bell with me with the whole sense of God thing in the Old Testament. I, f I find in a law that when I do good, evil is present with me. So when we do good and we're living right for the Lord, we're serving Him, we're doing things, evil still lurks its ugly head right around the corner. Just like in Job, when the sons of God went to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them, okay? So when two or three gather in the name of Christ, you know, in the Old Testament, it was the, the sons of God, you know, the name of Yahweh, the name of Jehovah, but in the New Testament, okay, when two or three gather together in the name of Christ, Satan can be right there. Satan can come among them, okay? Evil lurks its ugly head right around the corner. When I would do good, evil is present with me. Okay, he's aware of this. He's aware of his old nature still. There's still that possibility to sin, and, and he doesn't like that. Okay, this is a struggle of a saved person. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Does that sound like a lost person, someone who delights after the law of God? Okay, and he says that the law is good in verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Sound like a lost person saying that the law is good and, and I delight after the law, after the inward man? No. That's a saved person. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Okay? And I got Galatians 5.17 here. Something that Nate Marino doesn't mention. 
Uh, Galatians 5.17. Galatians 5.10. Seeds, six, Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Okay? And so Paul is telling them in the verse before that, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the, the flesh. So there are instances when a saved person can walk in the flesh, can do things that are contrary to the Spirit, okay? Because there is that struggle within. And there's a, there's a parallel here in Romans 7 and Galatians 5, 17, which, you know, Nate doesn't even mention. So, how ironic. So, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Okay? There is still a longing for the glorified body to be completely redeemed. Okay? No more struggling with the old man. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? He knows who his Savior is. He knows that there will be a future time when he will have a glorified body. This is a saved person. This is Paul speaking as a saved person. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now this is really interesting too, this second half of verse 25, you know, verse 25b, if you want to call it that. Because if this was speaking of Paul as before he was saved, speak, Paul speaking as a lost man, the, the historical president, whatever Nate says or whatever these other people want to say. Okay, if that was the truth, then it would seem that that this pa this verse, this chapter is anticlimactic because it should end on the note, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That should be the end of it. Okay? But it's anticlimactic if that's how they're going to interpret it because it says it ends on this. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Okay, so that that's anticlimactic then. Why does he go back to this? Why is he saying this, you know? And there have been some who have said that this, this last part of verse 25 was added into the Bible because they, they so badly want their false teaching to be true, that, that this is Paul speaking as a lost person. They say, well, that was added in there <laughs> because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um... So that's another reason to see it as Paul is a saved person because otherwise it's pretty anticlimactic. It should end on the note, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. But he continues to say, to say again, with my mind I serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So there is that struggle in a saved person's life. And you know, the mind is something that is renewed, you know. And you know, like Romans 12, you know, re renewed the renewed mind of a believer, okay. So, speaking of the same person here. And Nate and others will say that, you know, if you think that this is speaking of Paul as a saved person, then it doesn't really fit in with Romans 6 or Romans 8. Because Romans 8, you know, is talking about walking after the Spirit. And, you know, it's definitely talking about saved people. But that's not true. Um, if you see it as Paul speaking as a saved person, which is what it is, the true interpretation, uh, it could be, you know, Paul's trying to say that, you know, the inability to, to obey the law through the flesh, okay? And that's why 8 says that we need to walk after the Spirit. So even though a person is saved, they can still have struggles with the flesh and temporarily walk in the flesh at times. That doesn't mean that they're in bondage to sin, okay, or that they're completely defeated. So that's that's how Nate tries to interpret this passage, that Paul's saying he's completely defeated by sin and completely in bondage to sin. That's not at all what it says. He just, he struggles with sin, and he's longing for that time when he'll have full redemption and full glorified body that we should all long for. So... Anyways, I know it's kind of sloppy uh, reading here, but you know there's the, there's that verb tense change, and if you're going to go with what Nate says and others say, then you then you you say it's a historical present, which is completely stupid. Okay, 
and it's not the natural reading or understanding here. We see that he's, he went from past tense to present tense, so the natural way would just to say that he's now speaking currently, you know, as, as he is. And as I said, he says the law is good, I delight after the law, that's characteristics of a saved person. He uh, separates, you know, the sin that dwelleth in me, he separates his new nature from his old nature, okay? Um, you know, he hates what is wrong that he does. He hates evil, characteristic of a saved person. You know, and at the end, uh, verse 25b, he says again, you know, with my mind I serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Um, which would be anticlimactic in Nate's interpretation, okay? Nate's failure to mention Galatians 5, verse 17 in the, the parallel, you know, that 5.17 does say that the flesh wars against the spirit. And he's speaking to saved people, saying, don't walk in the flesh. So it is possible for saved people to walk in the flesh temporarily. Um... So, anyways, I'll just end it there. This is probably way too sloppy, but I plan on, you know, doing better videos on this in the future, so I hope that I've helped you uh, gain confidence that Romans 7 is speaking, is Paul speaking as a saved person. That's how we need to understand it. Are you going to get into error, and you're pretty much on the side of sinless perfection people, and we need to reject that. Christians can and do struggle with sin, that's a great chapter to show that, that Paul had those struggles. Indeed he did, but um, that doesn't mean that we're not saved, we're not a new creature, but it just means that you know, we still long for that glorified body. So it's not a license to sin or anything like that. It's not saying just because we're under grace that it's okay to sin. No, a true believer will hate sin, and that's what's expressed in Romans chapter 7. But there will be times when we will still struggle will still commit sin, but uh, thank God that we are forgiven. We just need to confess that sin, repent of it, and move forward and keep moving towards God's holiness, his righteousness, and keep longing for that glorified body. So thanks for watching. God bless.